The align panel is permanently docked in my After Effects workspace because I use it that often. What it allows you to do is align layers to themselves or the composition or even distribute layers to themselves or the composition. And I've created a comprehensive PDF that covers every single panel in After Effects. You can download it for free down in the description. And for the month of January, everything on my site is 20% off. That includes my courses, tools, and course bundles. So if you're interested in becoming a better motion designer or just learning more about After Effects, definitely take advantage of that sale. To show you how the Align Panel works, I'm going to use these icons of a bunch of my free tools you can download on my website. They're all shape layers, and once I have them selected, the Align Panel becomes active. So the first option that we have to choose is what we want to align these layers to, the composition or the selection. So I'm just gonna start with the composition, and this first row of buttons are the Align Tools, and this is pretty universal across all Adobe software or really any design software at this point. They allow us to align to the left or right edges, top or bottom, and then vertical and horizontal centers. So if I were to click on align left with this set to align to the composition, the left edge of each one of those shape layers is aligned to the left edge of the comp. Or if I were to align it to the top, then the top edge of the layers are going to be aligned to the top of the comp. Not the anchor points, but the actual bounds. And if I wanna get this back to the center, I could click this horizontal center and vertical center to get them in the middle, or a quicker way to do that is just the keyboard shortcut of Control or Command Home on a Mac, and that puts it right in the center of the composition. Now I'm gonna undo back to where we were with this scattered layout, and let's switch this from composition to selection now. So this isn't going to pay attention to the composition, it's just going to pay attention to the selection. So if I move this up to the top right and I say align vertically on the center axis, it's going to take the average vertical position of all of those layers and align them to it, not to the comp, but to the selection itself. Let me undo one more time, and now if I align this to say the bottom edge, it's going to find the bottom most edge from the selection, which is this layer right here, and align to that. So two very different behaviors there. Now, what happens if one of these layers is, say, much bigger and rotated to the side, and we'll move it down here. Now, if I select all of these and I align them to the bottom, notice that it is still paying attention to the bottommost edge. Even though that layer is rotated, that bottom edge where that transform handle exists is still what's being measured as the bottom edge of that selection. All right, let's undo a couple more times and let's get back to the center of the composition. And now let's take a look at the distribute layer section. Now, I would like to distribute this across the entire width of the comp so that all of these layers are spaced out evenly. So first of all, I'm going to horizontally center them so they're all on one row, and then I'm gonna switch this from selection to composition and find the distribute horizontally button. Now, when I click this, notice that it did not spread those icons across the entire composition. This isn't immediately apparent, but the distribute layers section does not pay attention to the align layers to option. This is just for the align controls, there's a device here showing you these distribute layers buttons don't have anything to do with the align layers to selection. So whether this is set to selection or to composition, it's always gonna distribute it based on the selection. What that means is I need to grab one of these icons and align it to the left of the composition, another one of these icons and align it to the right of the composition, then select my layers and distribute them. Now they're perfectly spaced with an even gap between each item. Now one key distinction with distribute layers is that this is paying attention to the anchor point. So if I enlarge a few of these icons, select them all again and distribute horizontally one more time, nothing changes. So distribute layers is not paying attention to the bounds of the layer, it's just paying attention to that anchor point, wherever that position is. And actually it's not even the anchor point. If I move the anchor point way off on this icon and I select all the layers again and distribute them again, it doesn't update. It's finding the center point of the bounds regardless of where the anchor point is and distributing based off of that. All right, let's undo a few times, get back to consistent sized icons, and I wanna point something out. This icon is layer seven in my layer stack, and this is layer four. So there wasn't much order here, but if I just shift click all of these so that I'm selecting them in the order from left to right, then I can cut and then paste. Now they're arranged in my layer stack in descending order in the order that I selected them. But watch what happens if I align them all to the left edge of the composition again, grab the top layer and drag it over to the right side, select them all and click on distribute. 
The layer on the left is layer seven, and then we've got layer five, and then eight, and then three. It's seemingly randomly placed all of these layers, and I'll be honest with you, I don't exactly know the logic of how it distributes these layers, whether it's based on the bounding box of every single one of them, and how far away each edge is from each other, I'm not sure. What I am sure of is that's not how I wanted them ordered. I wanted to see them in this descending order where roundabout was all the way on the right side and then regrouper was next and all the way down. So let me undo and show you how I would actually set that up. So roundabout already aligned to the left edge. Then I would go to regrouper and move it out a little bit. Then shift click, split text, and I would do this down the line so that there's a little bit of distance between each one of these layers. It doesn't have to be a lot, but unless somebody in the comments knows a workaround that I'm not aware of, this is the only way that I know of of ensuring the order stays consistent with how you have them ordered here in the layers panel. So I'm gonna select all of these again, distribute, and now we've got layer one, two, three, four, five, all the way down the line. It's preserved the order that I wanted. Now, if I just grab some of these icons and move them around again, the order is going to be messed up, but I just wanted to show you how the distribution works with the different alignment modes. So if I select all my layers and say distribute top, it's measuring the top edge and distributing everything evenly between the topmost and bottommost layers. Same thing for distribute bottom or distribute vertically, left, center, or right edges. Just remember that it's using the bounds of the layer regardless of where that anchor point is to determine that distribution. Now something that you need to keep in mind is if we were to create a null object and parent all of these layers to it, and then I transformed this layer, maybe made it a little bit bigger and rotated it. If I select all these layers minus the parent and I try to align these layers to the composition, it's no longer going to work because the relative position of these layers is now in relationship to the null object and it throws off the alignment. So if you're ever using the align panel and it's just not doing what you'd expect, it's likely because you're parenting that layer to another layer. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that the align panel just flat out doesn't work with 3D layers. So if I select all these, make them 3D, and try to align them, it's going to give me an error that says we cannot align or distribute 3D layers. I don't exactly know why. I think that you can find averages and alignments and bounding boxes of 3D layers the same way that you do in 2D. So I wish that was a feature of the align panel, but it is a limitation at this point. But that's pretty much it for the align panel. Now, if you're looking for a more advanced alignment option, I have created a free tool called Gridlock that brings a Flexbox style or auto layout from Figma style alignment system to After Effects. And it can be used as just an alignment tool. So I'm gonna click on this button with all these layers selected, and it's going to give me this Gridlock container. So if I click and drag this, it's going to determine how these icons are aligned. Right now, they're all in a single row. If I come up to this custom pseudo effect, I can change the direction from horizontal to wrap, and now these icons are gonna be contained within that container. I'm gonna turn the padding down. This is what pushes it off the edge of that bounding box and turn up the gap. That's going to change the spacing dynamically and interactively between each icon. Then I'll go to align and change this to space between and do the same thing for cross align. And now it's going to give equal spacing between each icon within this grid. So I can find an alignment that I like, maybe right there, and even adjust things like the scale of an object and it will automatically and dynamically push other layers out of the way. And let's say I like this layout, I'll just select everything minus that gridlock container and then alter option click on the button one more time. It unlinks it from Gridlock and now we just have a very nicely aligned grid of icons. You can download Gridlock for free down in the description. That's it for the Align panel. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Ed, 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 Ed,